Well guys, welcome back at Emotive PS Use and here we are with the cheapest Ryzen 5 on the market and also the first one to come out, the Ryzen 5 1600, a CPU which came out in 2017, so seven years ago. A lot of time has passed, huh? but it may still be decent in 2024 and it may actually be even a bit better than when it came out. So let's dive straight into it. Now this CPU is a 65 watt TDP chip with six core, 12 threaded with a 3.2 gigahertz base clock and up to a 3.6 turbo boost clock which is compatible with every single AM4 motherboard on the market even the cheapest B350s out there and that's actually what makes for a very good value point for this CPU because since they released a lot of Ryzen 5s over the years so we've had the 2600, the 3600, the 4500 terrible CPU, the 5600 and even all the G series with the APUs. And we even had the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which is the refresh of this one. Those are way too cheap. I'm talking 20 bucks on the used market to buy one. I managed to buy mine for 10 bucks because I bought it in a combo with an eight gig stick of RAM, a motherboard, which was deemed to be damaged and a CPU cooler. All combo set me back a whopping 30 bucks, but uh, the motherboard had a few bent pins and it was in terrible conditions. So I had to wash it down with the garden hose like we do here at Evotin PSUs usually. But after a nice wash, some isopropyl alcohol on it, it was looking brand new and actually performing brand new. So if you are willing to put in the work, you can definitely find a cheap combo for AM4. Because remember, you can buy a B350, no problem. But the first series of motherboard, the B350s, haven't aged that well. I think the B450s are the best value for money at the moment. And this is a B450 from Gigabyte, the DS3H. Pretty good motherboard. Now this CPU came out costing over 200 bucks, so it lost quite a bit in depreciation, which is great for us buying it today. But the question is, what can we do with it? Because this CPU, when it came out, I actually have a pretty bad story about it, because when this came out, I had just started with my passion for PC parts, and all the reviewers were praising the new Ryzen's because they just came out. And I had just built an Intel PC, one of my first ones, but I bought it all on Amazon and I was still within the month to send it back. So since I saw all these good reviews, I sent back my i5-6500 on a Z170 motherboard because I wanted to do the BIOS unlock on the motherboard to overclock it. And I bought a B350 ASRock motherboard and an AMD Ryzen 7 1700. And I spent the same money I would have spent on the i5 but I was getting double the cores, double the threads, and I felt like I was getting a very good deal. Because remember, uh, we already were on the seventh gen for Intel. However, my experience with first gen Ryzen was a complete nightmare. It was so bad that I stopped doing Ryzen PCs and I actually stopped recommending them all the way up until the 3000 series. I think with Ryzen 3000s, a lot changed, but the Ryzen 3000 suffered from high voltage issues. And I think the real good AMD chips are from Ryzen 5000 onwards. Ryzen now is very good. 7000 and 9000 Ryzens on AM5 are great. Ryzen 5000 is very good. And uh, the X3D chips made the AM4 platforms absolutely massive, which is the first reason why I do recommend a combo like this. Because if you buy this and you don't have much money, but then you save up for a while, you can then buy an X3D chip and slot it on the same motherboard with the same RAM and even with the same cooler and get yourself a massive performance upgrade. As I was mentioning, my experience with first gen Ryzen was terrible. Now, why was that the case? Well, that was because the single thread was lackluster. Now in benchmarks, it was actually decent, but in gaming, it was causing massive stutters. And I'm talking massive. We had two kinds of issues, the stutter, which we will discuss second, and optimization in productivity softwares. So these CPUs were great in productivity, but they were badly optimized because Intel was very strong at the time. So I'm happy to say that that is currently fixed. So even if you're using Photoshop and Adobe Suite, you can use these fine. If you're looking to build a budget little workstation or office PC, definitely consider first gen Ryzen. I think it's one of the best value out there. But if you're gaming, let's talk about the stuttering. So good things about these chips is you can overclock them and undervolt them and get a lot of extra performance out of them. Now I make tutorials for every single CPU and GPU out there on the channel on how to tweak them. But I think I'm not gonna make one for these chips because they are way too simple. I'm gonna just tell you in this video. So if you wanna, if you have a 1600 Ryzen, just go in the BIOS, put uh, the multiplier to 38 and put the voltage to 1.35 and uh, that's it. 
you're overclocked. And it's the same for Ryzen 7. Such voltage is going to degrade your CPU a little bit. You're not going to keep this for five years, let's face it. So I think you can do a trade-off to degrade your CPU a little bit, but get a better experience. Because overclocking reduces the stutters, which are still present. So this CPU is not a good gaming CPU. If you're playing Cyberpunk, even on the minimum settings, this thing is gonna stutter. The average FPS is good, but the 1% lows just dips. Even if you're playing with a 3090 and you're getting 60 FPS on Cyberpunk, 1% lows are gonna be in the 20s and it's gonna be basically unplayable. Same thing goes for any kind of intensive or badly optimized CPU heavy game. Now, if you're playing Fortnite or Apex Legends, I found that after the latest BIOS update, which is something you need to do on this motherboard, it's better. The BIOS updates, however, lose you performance. And since I had the chance to get an older motherboard with a non-updated BIOS, I tested that. So I will put now the CPU-Z score with the old BIOS stock settings. And you can see the single thread is over 400 points. Then I updated the BIOS, tested it again, and we got a 5% performance decrease, which is quite a lot. We went to the BIOS and just overclocked the CPU, put the XMP on. We gained back 7 to 8%. So we basically got the same performance as before the BIOS update. But with the new BIOS update, stuttering is better. But what I said in Cyberpunk is still true, even with the latest update. So I think CPU like this is only good if you're playing competitive titles and if you don't want high refresh rate either. When these came out, what reviewers were saying is that these CPUs are not good for the highs. So the high frames. Truth is, they dip so much, it doesn't matter what your frame rate is. You need to be able to take the drop. So if you're playing Fortnite, Apex Legends, and you want to play at 144 hertz, if you overclock this thing, yes, in performance mode, you can do that, but it's not going to be the best experience. I think one of the Xeons, which we took a look at in our X99 review in 2024, or even X79 review in 2024, even though they have less IPC, they push less frame rate, they are much more stable and are actually a better buy. So I cannot recommend combo like this for gaming in 2024, not even for low-end gaming. I would rather buy an older Intel chip. I think this is good for office, it's good for productivity, bugs are sorted. Definitely get the latest BIOS, even though you're losing performance a bit, it's worth it. But this is a premature platform and it is not good, even on a B450. B350 motherboards, they had a lot of issues with RAM, especially trying to lock in the XMP. Good thing about B450 is even 3000 megahertz, you can just lock in, but B350s, sometimes you encounter issues. They have fixed a lot with the BIOS updates, but not everything is fixable. And also if you buy a B350, I wouldn't really put a 5000 series chip on it. So that would limit your upgrade path. So Ryzen 5 1600, I think is definitely worth the low price. There's a reason the price is low. It's not a good chip, but it may be worth it for office productivity. And if you want a game also, but it's not the primary focus of your PC. And if you are prepared for what you're getting, if you want a mostly game, just get an older Intel CPU, maybe an X79, X99, or even like a Z170 and a 6000 series Intel chip, even though it has less cores, I think is a better buy. And I think this is the same for the Ryzen 7 of this generation too. Good CPU for productivity, not good for gaming. But if you guys disagree, please let me know down below. I'm very curious to hear about it. And very soon I'll be testing out the Ryzen 5 4600, which is also very cheap. But I think the conclusions on that are gonna be a lot different. Let me know what you think about first gen Ryzen, and if you had any good or bad experience with it, or if you found any fixes which I haven't mentioned here today, and uh, maybe drop a like and a sub if you watched the whole video. And I hope to see you guys again in another one. Bye-bye.